This is the first installment of Friday Finances. Jarrett, tell us who you are and what your journey is at the moment. We'll get into talking about money. My name is Jarrett. Go ahead and check out the episode notes because there's a bunch of links you can hear where else we're creating content and on different things. But my journey with money, I actually dropped a Medium article. Really, it was in 2015 where I had an epiphany. And when I say an epiphany, I just think I was forced into a corner and had to think about money because three things happened in 2015. One of them was that I finished my graduate work and I had six-figure student debt. And when that happens, you just have to start to ask, how am I going to get out of this? And then you start to see the compounding interest against you. And you realize, well, if this is at X percent and it's going to take me this many years, and even if I'm paying this much, how much am I paying in principal? How much am I paying in interest? So if you have any debt, student debt, credit card debt, I think that can maybe force you to think about money. The second thing that happened was I got investment into a company that I created that was fairly sizable. And I said, wow, okay. So clearly there are some people who have been playing the money game, if you want to call it. And they were able to figure something out enough to get them this amount of money. And within the same six month span, I also met someone who's now very much a mentor of mine when it comes to money and financial literacy, who was at the early age he was probably early 30s and he was already retired and he just spends his time in Latin America surfing. And I just said, well, there's something going on here. And all of those things happen in six months. And like I said, if you want to hear my me dive into this a little bit more and talk about building wealth, my perspective, you can check out the episode notes. I will have information there in my medium to talk about my journey. But really having those three things happen to me in 2015, all within six months, forced me to step back and say, what is happening here? What is going on? Is this a game? If this is a game, I didn't know it was game. Uh, if this is the game, what are the rules of the game? What are the uh, if this is the game, who's winning in this game? And yeah. also, what are the rules that most people play by? And then what are the rules that the few play by? And then focusing in on the few to try to see what they're doing a little bit. How are they doing things differently? And then also, does everyone have the same equal footing when they start? Or do some people start ahead? Some people start behind. And do the people that start behind get ahead of others? So my journey really with money super simply started in 2015. And here we are now in 2023, which is absolutely crazy. And it's really wild. I think it took me this long. I think, Grant, you've been talking about money and money management and financial literacy on the internet for a long time. But this is really my first <laughs> foray. And this is where you and I come together. But I think that's where I yeah. am on the journey now. But I don't know if I've ever heard your full journey or something close to that. Over the period of all of our content, whether it's not Crypto Bros, whether it's Friday Finances or my Monday morning show, you get tidbits of my journey. But I think the thing that all of these things have in common, the umbrella, first and foremost, is personal development for me. The reason I love talking about money, it's the natural, tangible, non-metaphysical thing we all have in common. We have a lot in common humans, but the societal thing we all have in common is money. In some form. I came from, I don't know if I can fairly call it poverty because I've been exposed to India and countries in Africa and Latin America. And there's different degrees of poverty, but relative poverty in the game we're playing and who starts ahead and who starts behind. I started behind in tangible factors and ahead in psychological factors. Those usually don't go hand in hand. But I started behind. There was even a period where I was briefly on the street having to take care of my little brother. The older I get, the more I realize that wounded me in ways that I'm still discovering. What I was absolutely determined to do is to win at what I thought was money then and to win at money now. And so this quest has bobbed and weaved from starting businesses, having investments, but really all of those were experiments into finding freedom. And so why I'm super convicted about this now, the mentor in me, the educator in me, the teacher in me, which is my calling on the planet. When I sit in front of small business owners, when I sit in front of someone just looking for direction in life, when you get to talking, they hit a wall invariably of excuses. And those excuses are wrapped in mindsets around money. You and I talk a lot about crypto. Save that for not crypto bros. But the reason I love crypto is to me, it's another form of goats. It's another form of puka shells. It's another form of salt. It's another form of currency. It's like a societal shift. So I'm concerned about money because contextual, there's a lot going on, but my heart is for the average person who's listening to gurus and misapplying principles. They think they're receiving principles, they're receiving tactics, and they're shaping who they are in their late teens, early 20s, even their 30s. And they're working 40 to 80 hours a week at a thing they say they don't care about. So there's these awful, goofy paradigms that, are, that I want to tackle with this show. For those watching or for those listening later in the replay, we want to hear from you on the topic today. And that is, is 
How do you define financial freedom? As of today, Jared, hmm. how do you define financial freedom? So great question. And I love that that's where we're going to start. Before I want to talk about financial freedom, I want to talk about what you brought up there, which is our other shows, Not Crypto Bros. And then I have my own podcast and brand called More Than Blockchain. Yeah. You and I both obviously see crypto as part and parcel of this conversation of what is money or what is a way that we can, as humans, interchange value. Right. It used to be mm -hmm. goats, as you said. It used to be cattle. It used to be salt. <laughs> it used to be puka shells. It used to be all these things. And now, as a global society that lives on this thing called the internet, and shout yeah. out if you're just hearing this for the first time, Grant and I have never met in person. Ever. And now Ever. we have two <laughs> I'm shows. I'm scared to now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't want to ruin it. And so <laughs> yeah. we now have two shows, but that just shows the power of the internet. The internet yeah. allowed us to exchange information. And what crypto allows us to do as a global society is allows us to exchange value just in the same exchange. way that Grant and I can exchange information this simply. Um, and I don't want to get into crypto too much, but I think it is part of my own financial freedom journey. For me, financial freedom right now, it kind of ebbs and flows, but it really comes down to financial freedom for me is having enough economic abundance to be able to have on my oxygen mask, to have choice about whether I want to work a nine to five. Yeah. Uh, it's probably saying that you no longer have a boss, even though you do, because it's yourself and we're always going to be our harshest critic. Okay. But then I think it's also getting to a point where you can give back. I think that's give true back. financial freedom, having so much that you can give back. And for many of us, and I think we're still in this journey, we're still trying to get enough to feel like our oxygen mask is on. And then the next step would be finding ways that we can just give back the whole time. And I think that totally messes up the system. And I see Austin just put in his definition. So I'll be sure to read that out in one second. But yeah. I think the system is so built in the way that you have to take and yeah. that there's scarcity and that if Grant has something, then I can't have it. And so when you cross a threshold of financial freedom and you can get to the abundant side, that just yeah. flips the paradigm of take on its head. I want to read out Austin's and then I'm going to throw you the mic, but just as a recap, I think it's having enough that you can give back and that you no longer have to play the employment game or even play the mm. entrepreneurial. Mm. You can just totally step away and let your economic energy that you've built or you get through cash flow. And we can talk about how you use real estate to leverage some of this to then be able to sit back, maybe focus on the things that you a hundred percent want to do all the time and then give back. And Austin says financial freedom is the ability to pursue projects and passions without being concerned about being able to meet one's needs. And I it's absolutely huge. love that. And I think needs is a really interesting one. And you've already yes. touched on it. I think whenever you start to talk about financial freedom, you're going to get into Maslow's hierarchy of needs and just looking at what people need. Because maybe you don't need $10,000 a month. Maybe you actually yeah. just need 2000. You just need to live in a cheaper place. <laughs> we'll totally get into that as that is both part of our financial freedom journey. But yeah. for you, what do you, how do you define financial freedom? For me, financial freedom is the summary of a math equation. Does my relative passive income exceed my current or desired expenses. And so there is a hard number to that, right? A lot of times entrepreneurs talk about what's your number and that's a financial freedom number. For example, a million dollars in the bank at 3% interest is 30 grand a year that you technically don't have to work for. I love this topic because I never had the financial mentor to get my thinking right about money. And we are just going to share everything we know at this point. So for me, financial freedom is when my relative passive income, I say relative, everyone says passive income. That is because I do not believe there is true passive income on this planet. Everything requires a degree of maturity and management. Even if it's just watching your balance and preserving capital, that's still a level of maturity. But relative passive income exceeds my current expenses. And I say that because you mentioned budget. At any given moment, I could be financially free or I could be financially enslaved. At any given moment. Carrie, Elizabeth says, yes, the financial independent number is massively important to have a guide. So for example, what Carrie's saying and what I was getting at, someone's financial freedom, if their expenses were $25,000, their number is a million because at 3% interest in the bank, they're now making $30,000 a year and relatively passively. And now they have what we know in chess and what we know in philosophy is optionality. Optionality means I wake up and I have more options than others. 
and even in my past self. I could say I want to go to the beach today. I could say I want to work my butt off today. I could say I want to make more sales. I could say I want to paint a painting, and I go do that. But people's wants are always changing. People's budgets are always changing. For example, Marissa and I could have hit our number five years ago, but we had a massive realization. What will we do in retirement? So our big number and our numbers had to shift. So the big thing about financial freedom is if you have a principal definition, now you've got dials on the dashboard, my passive income, that's one dial. And you know, my current expenses, that's another dial. And now you're just playing with those right now. I could liquidate and be financially free, but I'd have to reel in some of my wants. And here's the thing about wants and needs. Needs are not really needs. Needs themselves are wants that have solidified. So like Marissa's big concern for a long time was, well, what about healthcare when we get older? It's only inflating. So that number, we could liquidate everything and be doing okay, but we have higher ambitions that have shifted from wants to needs. I want to take care of my family's properties. I want my family to have real estate free and clear. I have passion projects to serve more people and that requires a bigger nut when I get passive. So I think financial freedom for me is a principle. And unfortunately right now, my number is in flux. So I have a lot of insecurity, to be honest. Now, how did you come to your definition or maybe what is your main strategy to achieving your definition? Go ahead. Yeah. First of all, I love that your definition is very math-based. It's just saying I need to have accrued essentially more than what I need slash want. And right, we're going to talk about that for an entire episode, right? Sure. Really self-reflecting and, and yeah, saying yeah. needs and wants. You really need yeah. that, right? Do you need to have that $2,200 car lease because it makes you feel good? Yeah. So what's my system or what's my... What's what, your current strategy to achieving my, what you financial. define as financial freedom. Yeah, so my current strategy for achieving it is just 100% based on crypto as of right now. I think that there's a play in the future where I will diversify with real estate, but that would probably be me buying real estate in Latin America. But mm -hmm. as of right now, my play is just through crypto. It's through investing in crypto and then allowing myself to have enough energy. I just call it economic energy. So that way, if I'm talking about crypto, I'm talking about dollars. If we're talking about real estate, it's just, you have this amount of money. And then the system is, as you've just put up geo arbitrage and lowering expenses. It's I might be then, misspelling this. So don't critique my morning. No, spelling. that looks good. <laughs> I think there's an extra R, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. And then it's, yeah. And then it's as like my mentor, it's saying, you know what, if you're on this goal and you know that you need to have X amount per year, and then you easily divide that by 12. So, you know, you need X amount per month. Well, once you've had the conversation about budgeting and needs and wants, and you have done this, because I think a lot of people, as they make more money, they spend more money. And yeah. as long as you do that, you'll never be, as far as the definitions we've talked about, you'll actually never be financially free because you're always just going to be chasing, you're going to be chasing the rabbit. So bigger passions, bigger projects, yeah, bigger is know, just this MO of humanity. Bigger wants, yeah, bigger needs, more. bigger more. The more, yeah. the moreism, And then it will be splitting time between real estate somewhere in the United States and somewhere in Latin America, probably Colombia specifically, where then I'll split my time. If I could translate, you say sure. crypto, correct me if I'm wrong. Your play with crypto, though there is income generating opportunities, your mindset is a growth, what we would call in real estate an equity mindset so that in a future date, there's equity over whatever your buy-in was, your dollar cost average or your purchase price. There's this huge amount of growth and then you can extract value from that growth in the future or when it when you need it at a slower pace than the growth is growing. So you have a growth mindset for your, not retirement even, but your wealth building, your financial freedom building. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. And my mentor, he leveraged real estate, as I know you do, to get as many monopoly houses on the board and then just make sure you cover your needs and wants essentially with monthly cash flow. If you can get in $12,000 in monthly cash flow from your real estate properties in profit after taxes and after covering all the fees and the management and whatever you have to cover, then I think that's probably the most digestible way that people think about it. But mm -hmm. for me, I look at crypto and I look at Bitcoin and what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing from others and what I know from the protocol as Bitcoin is basically a programmed money distribution. And once again, that's a brutal money. way to say yeah. yeah, that's a brutal way to say it. But well, I'm going to keep it right there for right now. I'm thinking that by 2032, more or less, Bitcoin will be at a million dollars. Then I work backwards and I say, okay, how much do I need to invest now to make sure I have set amounts? So that way, when that happens, I can just sell off a little bit every year 
and always have more as long as Bitcoin grows. Now, there's a lot yeah. of assumptions in there, but sure. I do think the new modality to financial freedom, honestly, my mix is using Bitcoin growth and being able to run a couple nodes in Ethereum. Which we'll is an me... income-based approach, not a growth approach. Yes. So mixing those two to cover. So that way I have an income-based approach that, that would spit out to me basically like a monthly passive income. Once again, I totally agree with you. There is no such thing as passive income. If anyone says that they don't understand it or they're trying to sell you a crap product on yeah. online. So some mix between either of those. And I'm still working out the exact strategy, but I definitely am, as you've said, I'm really honing in right now. And what is my number? What is my monthly mm. number where I'll feel that I'm super supported and I can cover everything and still be able to, for me, it's really important to be able to travel and see friends and family. As long as I can do that, then I'm really getting close. And we're going to dive into a lot of different topics here about financial freedom. But one of them for me is huge is geo arbitrage. One of them for me, and I see some comments up coming up here on my Ethereum comment. One of them for me is being able to maximize travel rewards points in a in a strategic way. Yeah. And then one of them for Chris me is- Chris Gillibo has a huge product. He has a travel hacking product somewhere and it's points specifically, and he murders it. I'll, we'll share that resource later, maybe another episode or maybe offline. Yeah, I and mean, maybe we can talk about that because I think that's, these are like these little things that yeah. where you add 1% here, 1% here, and eventually it adds up to 100% of knowledge yeah. to be able to execute this. Yeah. So geo arbitrage, manipulation of credit cards and points, those are huge. Having a really stripped down budget, we'll talk about this more, but minimalism for me is a huge part of my life I minimalism think it is for oh. you as well yeah. once you in the consumer culture that we live once yeah. you push back and you don't consume once again it pushes against the paradigm grant and i have to fight up this mountain that is capitalism and like tooth and nail and claw at each other and we're like no mm -hmm. why don't i lift him up and then he'll lift me up and then i'll lift him up and then we'll get higher and that's part and parcel of what we're trying to do here because as grant mm -hmm. said one of the things that I really want to do now in my financial journey, and I'm going to be on it forever. I'm always going to be on this journey is have conversations around it, share our own tips, tricks, and everything in a very like open manner and not in a way that this is what you should do more like this is what we have done. And yeah. if you can learn anything yes. from that and take a nugget here or there, mm -hmm. even if every episode, you just get one little nugget that helps you on your journey. For me, mm -hmm. that's a win. So I want to call out some of these comments and then I'll throw it over to you. Let's see. Crypto focused financial freedom is mostly growth. Yes, so that's the comment you made on me. And then Austin says, well, I would say Ethereum validator nodes are both income and growth. And I completely agree as the network grows and as the value of Ethereum also grows, not only would you be getting paid, but you'd be getting paid in something that could be appreciating over time. There's not like a, a way that works. I mean, I guess stock dividends get close, but even that is different, I think, than Ethereum nodes. Real estate. Uh, Real estate, but you don't get paid in real estate. Like you get paid in Ethereum, so you get paid in the thing that also continues to grow. Like you can't- I mean like direct yeah. compounding. Yeah, and that's just how like when we get into floor places, we're gonna use a lot of words if you're not familiar with crypto or NFTs or the blockchain back ecosystem as I call it. Hopefully ask as many questions as you want, but it's like, Grant, when NFT projects, for example, they're like, oh, the floor is lowering. But I'm like, yeah, but the Ethereum is increasing. Well, you know? wealth in general. You were mentioning definition of terms. And this is an important wealth principle. Today is not about crypto, but it is about crypto because with a reasonable person like yourself, crypto is about wealth. We could and do on another show nerd out about the tech and the future and the culture and the philosophies and the impact societally big time in tandem with that is the wealth building. And I love Robert Kiyosaki's definition here, financial literacy, financial vocabulary, floor for NFTs validator nodes. These are just parallels. We have parallels in real estate, as you just heard us share. Anytime you can acquire or invest in a definition of a term, that term will most likely make you money. P and E ratios, beta, deltas, when it comes to stocks, if we just knew the definitions of these terms, we could then spy the trends. You can't see what you don't have vocab for. I could say this to Jared and he's going to chuckle. If the floor of a doodle hit one ETH, I would get that ish all day long because there's value there and I can spot the trend because I knew the definition of the term. But if you watching don't know what those definitions of terms are, you're going to think that's too much for me. But people are safer and more comfortable with terms maybe for real estate that they might not be aware of. Maybe equity is a tough word. So I love the fact that you called out definition of terms. Aussie jumps in, Austin here. Crypto is definitely the main wealth building tool for most of this generation. I challenge the word most. 
I would replace it with the word many. Go ahead, Jared. Yeah, I wanted to hop in on this too. And I love Austin in the comments. And Austin, and I, we haven't spent enough time honestly together. And I'm sure maybe we could even have Austin on this show or on Not Crypto Bros soon. He's a great person to talk about business building. So I think he could touch on this too. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to say, I think it's really cool that Austin put up his number here. He's very open about it. He said, hey, $500 a month is my number. Meaning that's the amount of money Austin would need to yeah. be able to, as he said, put on his mask to be able to focus on the projects he wants to on his yeah. own time. Today's show is about defining financial freedom for ourselves. And we're giving our examples in order to allow you, the viewer who's watching this now or in the replay, to think heavily about A, what is financial freedom to you? And B, what systems do you have faith in? In this show, we're gonna be talking about money. Money is only backed by faith and confidence. Jarrett's very confident in a million dollar Bitcoin. I am pseudo confident, so that's not where I put heavily my money. I'm a little confident, so I put a little of my money. Where are you confident? Austin's so confident that he believes most of this generation will do wealth building through crypto. That might be, but you should know from today's episode how you want to define financial freedom. To me, I want to define it in a way that is useful, that I can take action on, that I am in control of. My summary of my definition of financial freedom is agency. I am in the control position, whether because I understand principles, because I understand skills, because I am in control of the income and expense in my life. So I have different tactics. I have multiple streams of incomes. I'm always learning new definitions of new technologies. I'm steeped in crypto because I believe that is the next wave of wealth. For sure, the next billion dollar people are billion dollar content creators, which is going to blow people's minds, Mr. Beast being one of them, and billion dollar crypto enthusiasts, which have already happened, but there's going to be another wave of new tech and new support. So for me, financial freedom can be summarized as agency, can be extrapolated to be my relative passive income exceeds my current expenses. You want to summarize your financial freedom? Yeah, just bringing it back for me, it's being able to live a completely abundant life and having enough that I can give back. And giving once back. Again, I, I summarized this in the Medium article, which will be posted in the episode notes below, but just having enough that you can give back. Not only can you focus on what you want to do, probably leave a boss behind and become your own permanent boss, be able to spend your time. And I think this is really important to both of us. And this will be a part of this show, finding ways that we can support others on their yes. journey, whatever it is. And the other thing I want to say about financial freedom, and this is something that I think isn't said enough. This doesn't have to be your goal. It's just Correct. what I believe to be the easiest goal to allow people to dive into financial literacy, money management, and live an intentionally budgeted life with a purpose. Otherwise, sometimes we have money, we'll just go spend it on things we don't really maybe need or want because we've never had a lot of the need or want conversations or there's self-reflection that is budgeting in yeah. a capitalist society. So yeah. for me, it's having enough to give back. And it's huge. so, yeah. Huge. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us for Friday Finances. Jarrett, where can people follow you? People can follow me on all the links that I think we're going to leave below. We are going to just leave a lot of episode notes below. Yeah. I have my brand more than blockchain, and then I also have my own personal brand. So that's probably the best place. Grant, how about you? You can find us at stateofthespark.com and of course, notes below. Listen, folks, we're going to talk about this because we didn't have these mentors. We want to leave behind breadcrumbs at least to the point where we've reached, and maybe we'll go along together to pursuing financial freedom. So follow us on our other shows. Follow us on Friday mornings at about 7 a.m. Thank you so much. And we'll see y'all next time on Friday Finances. Thanks so much.